Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this morning, uh, we're going to talk about all or nothing. And I want to start off by saying to you that this was what the Spirit of God was dealing with me uh, uh, with in the topic all night long. So I really don't have anything else but to present to you what God presented to me. And as I've said before, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So the, I, I'm ready, and the Holy Spirit appeared and gave me this thought to share with you today. All, A-L-L, -L, are nothing. All are nothing. And hopefully by the time we finish with this, you will have a clear understanding of the, the necessary component that, that we need to complete uh, the will of God so that we have everything that he wants us to have in this life as well as in the next. So in the very, very, very scripture uh, <clears throat> that I'm going to read with you, uh, read to you, it's going to be uh, found in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. That's Mark chapter 12, verse 30. It reads this way. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. I want to read that again. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This is the very first thing that uh, we need to do and apply to our lives to move forward in the blessings of God, is to give God everything. Now, why is this important? Because when Jesus comes and he's teaching us about oneness and inclusion, and he's teaching us that there's no separation in his message, we've been talking about that. We've been setting uh, the stage and the scene ups for us to even get into this conversation this morning. And by going back to this scripture, we can have a clear understanding of what God is requiring. But then in your own personal life, you can think of this. Every place that you held something back, you didn't give your all, the, the percentage or the sum of what you held back was exactly the measure that you needed to complete. So if you gave all your funds and all your time was exactly what was necessary for you to obtain the goal that you had set out to obtain. You can't hold anything back. When you want to obtain from God, you have to give all of your life. Now, we have been um, um, what's the, fooled, okay, are, 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 are persuaded to think that if I'm doing several different tasks, I can't give my all to each and every one of the tasks that I'm doing. I have to give 50% here, 30% there, 20% there. That's not the way that this works. In everything you do, you give 100%. You give your all. You give your all to prayer. You give your all to ministry. You give all to your job because you are able to do that. You're not divided, okay? You are not divided. Now, <clears throat> in Colossians chapter 2, uh, verse 9, it says, In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And one of the things that the Spirit of God wanted me to share with you this morning is, in each and every one of us, we have the full Godhead dwelling us. I don't care how many in individuals there are. All individuals have all the Godhead in them bodily. So you have the kingdom of God in you. There's nothing outside of you that can complete you. There's nothing outside of you that you need to add to yourself to make yourself complete. You are complete in him. Now you're in Christ and Christ is in God and all the Godhead dwells in him bodily. So you have all the Godhead uh, in you bodily. So God has given you his all for you to really understand how this works, you have to give your all to God. Now, God said to me, he says, there, all and nothing cannot exist in the same space. You can't have all and nothing in the same space. It's either all or it's nothing. So if you're not believing with all your heart, you're not believing with nothing. If you're not giving all your time, you haven't given God anything. If you haven't given all your mind to him, you haven't given him anything. It's either all are nothing. I want to say that again. It's either all or nothing. All are nothing. They can't um, occupy the same space at the same time. 
much like light and darkness can't occupy the same space at the same time. So, so whenever light shows up, there's no darkness. For darkness to even show up, there has to be an absence of light. There has to be an absence of light for darkness to even come. So now, if you're in the dark, that means light is not present. There's no way for light to, and darkness to have and occupy the same space. I want to say that again. There's no way for light and darkness to occupy the same space. You have the Spirit of God. There's no way with you with, and the Spirit of God together that darkness can occupy the same space. Your temple, your temple, which is your body, is occupied by God's Spirit. So there's no way for evil to occupy that same space, that same temple. There is absolutely no way for this to happen. But if your mind is fooled to believe that you're divided, then your mind is the cause of the, of the uh, conflict in your life. Now, a lot of us, when we're praying, okay, we're praying and asking God for the effect. We're praying against an effect. For example, if there's sickness, then we're going to pray and rebuke the sickness. If there's poverty or lack, we're going to pray and, and, and command prosperity to come in and rebuke the lack. Whatever the situation, whatever the problem may appear, you know, when, it's, when it appears, you pray against that problem. But see, the, what God has been showing me, that's where answer, there is no answer for those kinds of prayers. Absolutely none. It's just a hit and miss. And I'm telling you, God does not deal with hit, hitting, hitting and missing. He, he hits every time he swings. There's no such thing as missing. There's no such thing as sometime yes and sometime no. Those explanations are given by people who don't understand the principle of answered prayer. The principle of answered prayer is to know you already have what you are declaring, not to hope for it. There is no deficiency. Most of us, when we pray, we pray from a position of thinking we are lacking something. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, if you have in your possession or to your assets, is, is, is yours, a, a million dollars, and you walk into a store and you see something in that store that you want, you have no fear of not being able to pay for it because you have the full security that I have a million dollars back in me. When I walk in this store, I either have it on my, on my card or I have it in cash, whatever it is, you have the resources and the funds to buy whatever you want. You don't have any fear unless, uh, when it comes to purchasing something, unless it is presented to you as being more than a million dollars. <throat> now, what you want costs two million dollars. Oh man, I don't have two million. All I got is a million. So fear may come in and say, man, you're not going to be able to get this because you don't have enough. Well, see, if you had an abundance, more than enough, an endless supply, there's no room for fear. Now, I was praying and I was asking God to take away my fear. And one of the things, and one of the places that I even got that, conjured up that thought, was when I was, I was remembering the parable about the, about the young man that was throwing himself in and out of the fire and the, and the disciples of Christ could not heal him. And so Jesus came along, the man brought this young man to Christ and he said, I'm bringing him to you uh, because your disciples weren't, weren't able to cure him or able to heal him. And Jesus says, well, do you believe that I can do this? And then the, the, the father says, Lord, I believe that you can do this, but help my unbelief. Well, when I read that or when I remember that scene, help my unbelief equated help my fear, help any part of me that's, that's afraid. And so when I, when I was talking to the Lord, the Lord says, look, I cannot cast any fear out of you because I didn't create fear. Fear is not a part of my creation. Fear is your creation. You have to deal with the fear. I can't do anything with it, Will. And I said, well, Lord, what am I to do? He says, what you do when you come into fear is to replace fear with perfect love. I said, replace fear with perfect love? He says, exactly. Anytime fear shows his head, replace it with perfect love. And then the scripture blossomed in my mind. Perfect love cast out all fear. 
because fear has no place in your life. If you're fearful or frightened, this is because you're not walking in the perfection of God's love. There is nothing about God loving you where he draws his love back. His love toward you is perfect. Love covers a multitude of faults. He is not keeping score with the things you did or did not do, weighing the balance against you. Maybe I will bless you or maybe I won't bless you. God is simply good. There's no variation. There's no turning in him. And when you understand that God has given himself, all of himself to you, then you can give all of yourself back to him. And there is either all or nothing. Jesus says this, okay? Let's look at um, another verse of scripture here. That's in James 1, chapter 6. And why we as people praying and asking God for stuff don't get anything. You want to know why your prayers are not answered? It's because you haven't believed in all. It's either all or there's nothing. In James chapter 1, verse 6 uh, and through 8, it says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave in the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So God is telling you, you cannot be double-minded minded and expect to get an answer from him. So where is the power? The power of creation is in your mind. This has nothing to do with God. God has enabled your mind to co-create with him. All creations come from your mind. If you want to be healed in your body, it has to be a healing that comes from your personal mind. You have to change your mind. You have to be fixed in your mind about we are all inclusive with God. We are with him. He is with us. There's never been no separation. There is no condemnation because God does not create or function like that. That's not his, his M.O. So you're going to have to realize what God's M.O. is and then align yourself with his thought. His thought has to become your thought. Something else you need to do, and just you know, I'm, I'm, giving, I'm throwing all these things out there, and I hope you're taking notes. The next thing you have to con come to the conclusion of is that the Spirit of God sees no error. I want to say that again. The, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, sees no error. The only thing the Holy Spirit sees is truth. Say it again. Because there's no turning and there's only light with God, no error, no evil, none of that stuff is in his preview. He don't see no evil, no error at all. All God sees is truth. Say it again. All God sees is truth. So how do I know if I'm walking by the spirit or by the flesh or by the carnal senses? Well, you know it by what you see. If you're seeing mistakes, if you're seeing error, if you're making judgment, if you're finding justification for anger, if you're finding justification for this or that, it's because you're not walking by the Spirit of God. If you walk by the Spirit of God, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the Spirit of God does not see no error. It only sees truth. So whenever you speak to somebody, you, there is no excuse for them not being whole. There is no excuse for them not being healed. There's no excuse for them not being strong because you only see the truth. And the scripture tells you, you will know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make you free. Say it again. The truth shall make me free. If you're not free, it's because you don't know the truth. Because if you know the truth, it'll make you free. Somebody out there ought to nod their head and say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus uh, uh, came and said, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority, which means all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. All, there's nothing left. There is no devil. There is no evil. It's, it is a creation of your mind. There is only one sheriff in town and it is Jesus Christ. You are co-anchoring with him. You are co-ruling with him. So if there's any evil, it is in the conflict of your own mind. If you find peace in your own mind, you'll find peace in your own body. Here's another disnomer. You thinking uh, that your body has a mind of itself. You think it creates sickness on its own. So you think, oh, my body has contracted this and my body has contracted that. Wrong, 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 wrong. Because your body is, is a learning tool. It is a learning tool. 
it is a learning tool. Jesus speaks to us in this fashion, talking about the true vine and we being branches. If we are connected to the true vine, and, and our branches will bear fruit because the branches bear the fruit of the vine. Well, the body is what is bearing fruit. So if your mind is connected to the mind of Christ, there's only one kind of fruit that he is bearing. There's only one kind of fruit that he is bearing. And then in James chapter 3, it talks about the tongue. Because I, I originally was going to uh, entitle this the tongue and the power of the tongue. But God changed, like I said at the beginning of this broadcast, God changed my title and my subject matter. But the tongue, and James talked about the tongue. Talk about how the, you know, with our tongue we bless God and with that same tongue we curse the men who, who were created out of God. And the fountains don't give good uh, sweet and bitter water. So out of your mouth, you can't have cursings and blessings. And this is very important, especially for this generation that uses their tongue without understanding the power of the tongue. See, the power of the tongue is the unruly evil, and no man can tame it. You can't not control the tongue with self-will. You can't will yourself to be in control when it comes to your tongue. Because when your emotions get involved, it overrides your will. So the only way to control the tongue is with a reality that, that proceeds and flows from your spirit. Your spirit speaks and not your flesh. You have to see everything from your spirit. And now, because I love spirit life, I love to see what Christ sees, then I'm gonna control my tongue and my tongue is only gonna speak life. And that which is constructive and not judgmental or destructive. So whenever you forgive somebody, you got to forgive them with correction. Correction constructively, not correction destructively. So the tongue is building you up. The tongue is to correct you and build you up, to tell you, to remind you, you are the child of God. You are better than your behavior. When you go to the reason you're behaving this way, change the reason your behavior changes. Don't fight against your behavior. Don't get mad because you're losing your temper, because you're never angry with what you think you're angry with. Go back and find the cause. Go back and identify what is making me do this. And when I get rid of that, I get rid of the behavior. It's just that simple. But we've made it complex that with all these rules in our, and setting a rule here and a rule there. Jesus says, don't have no other rules than the ones that I give you because if you have any other rules than the ones that I give you, you're going to be imprisoned by those rules. So just have the rule that I give you. And the rule that Jesus Christ gives you is one rule, love. It. If you can master love, everything else just flows freely to you because God is love. God is love. God is love. So just have that rule. Amen? In Ephesians 1.3, it says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Not partially, everyone. So if you're blessed, past tense, with every, what are you asking for? Why are you asking? Why do you believe in lack? Why do you believe that something is missing and God needs to add something to what's missing in you to make what's missing in you complete. So you believe in lack. God is, you're not saved because you believe in lack. You're saved by faith. You are what you are by the grace of God. God has given you his surname. And for those of us who know the surname I am, we can use it. We're the strong. We can pray for those who are weak. And they don't have to have the same spiritual maturity as I have for me to be a blessing or for me to release a miracle in their life. I have to see them only one way. I can't see them no other way but connected to God, connected to his health, connected to his life, connected to his well-being. And when I speak that, quit pleading and asking for what already is, then my faith replaces their weak faith and my faith gets them to be strong until they're able to stand on their own. That's like bearing up your brother and sister, not being wore down, not being tired, but being encouraged that my faith is strong enough to help them. Now it's up to them to allow your faith to help them. They may not want your faith to help them. They may believe what they believe and you can't do anything about that. But what you can do is stand for them. When somebody says, well, I'm standing in the gap, what does that mean? That means I don't care about what you think. When Jesus 
healed, he didn't care about what the people believed. He, he said to that man, he said to that man that they lowered down on the mat, you know, that paralytic, that they tore somebody's roof up and lowered them down as he was teaching in that meeting. He saw the, their faith. He said to them, your sins are forgiven. And everybody around who thought they knew God. And that's the problem with the church today. They think they know God. You know, they know, oh, no, ain't nobody can forgive sins but God. Like God haven't already forgiven everybody of this sin. Like God would hold something against somebody. You know? And so Jesus said, well, knowing their thoughts. He, you know, he answered them. Knowing their thoughts without addressing them directly. You know? Well, what's easier to say? Your sins are forgiven. Arise up and take up your bed and walk. What's most comfortable to you? So that you know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Rise up your, and take up your bed and walk. The man got up and walked. Isn't that interesting? Jesus is telling us flat out in your face. You don't have to ask God for no forgiveness. Men have power on earth to eradicate your sins. He does it again in John chapter 20. He comes after the resurrection. He comes before the disciples. He blows on them. He says, receive authority. Receive my life. Receive my ability. Receive all the power of God. And whatever sins that you retain or retain it. Whatever sins you remit are remitted. Again, he's letting man know this is your job on earth as sons of God to extend your father's heart. But whenever you are in fear, which you created, you are projecting confusion. You are projecting chaos. You are projecting illness. You are projecting these things. And it's not coming from no devil. Instead of uh, allowing yourself and being responsible for your own creations, you're trying to blame another force. There is no other force. There's just you and God. It. That's it. Nothing else. So if you have a problem, if there's a devil, it's you. If there's hardship, it is you. So what you need to do is change your mind and accept all. I receive all. I'm content that all my need is met. Somebody ought to shout. All my need is met. All my need is met. Not partial, not some of my need, but all my need is met. Why is all my need is met? Because I have all spiritual blessings. And everything in the natural first is in the spirit before it becomes the natural. And any need that appears in my natural, it'll manifest in my, from the spirit into my, my natural world. All my need is met. Fear is not it has no place in my mind because I am fully, richly supplied by my Father. My Father God has supplied all my need. Now, are you telling me that you believe that God has missed it when it comes to you? That you believe that your attitude can change God's eternal love for you? Do you believe that your unbelief can change his faith in you? Are you telling me that the grace of God is not greater than your error? Do you believe in failure more than you believe in life? Then you will have what you believe. The scripture says, as a man thinketh, so is he. The power has been given to you. It's not with God. It is with you. So you need to take responsibility and be all in. Just say, hey, I'm all in. It's, it's a done deal. I am all in or I'm not in. Either be all in or don't be in at all. Well, that was a fast 30 minutes. So just quit wasting your time with religion. You can't, there's no answer in religion. It's relationship, and God is not withholding not one good thing from you, not one. There's nothing that God is withholding from you. You need to change your mind, renew your mind with the truth. It starts here, in your mind. It starts here, in your mind. If you have to start saying things over and over and over again, you need to renew your mind. I am blessed, I am blessed. I have all power, all power, all power. Not some power, all power in heaven and earth belongs to me because I'm in Christ Jesus. All power is mine. I have all wisdom. I have all understanding. I am not lacking. There's nothing missing. There's nothing lacking in me. There's nothing broken in me. God created me perfect. I am as God created me. I am as God created me. 
and nothing I've done and nothing that happens in this world can change the truth that I am who I am. I am what God says I am by the grace of God. Glory. Amen? Well, I hope you guys got something from today. I want to thank you for supporting our ministry. Even though we're not in the building, we are still together. We have totally erased space and distance because our spirits have been joined in Christ Jesus. This medium that we have, Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, is just a medium to remind us that we are one. As he is, so are we. And we as a family, the New Creation Christian Faith Center, and all the guests that view us, we are all one in him. There's nothing that can separate us. God is not upset because you are receiving the word by way of Facebook, by way of YouTube, by way of Zoom, or whatever medium that I have, Twitter, or whatever else that we get this word out to you. God wants you to hear the truth, and the truth will make you free, no matter where you are. You're never, ever alone. You're never by yourself. He will never forsake you. You have all of heaven right there in the room with you, right on the inside of you. All the Godhead dwells in you bodily, so you have no excuse. Amen? You have no excuse. And you know, I have a lot to say. I only a few minutes to say it. So this, we're going to end here. And again, thank you for your tithes and your offerings that you've been sending us by way of, of, of um, da, 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 da. <laughs> by way of going to www.nccfc.net dropping it in the mailbox and, and addressing the, the, the envelope to 2851 West 120th Street. Sweet E, as in Edward 522, Hawthorne, California, 90250, or simply Zell. Zell, just put, guess go to Zell, put your tithes and offering, and address your Zell to Sister Wheat uh, at yahoo.com. And until Wednesday, we'll be back on Wednesday, and I'm still, I'm back to sending out my uh, video emails for those who are on my mailing list. You'll be getting video emails uh, from me, and we're dealing with true prayer in those emails. So you're going to hear me. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to be there to instruct you. This will be up on YouTube if it's not simultaneously recorded on YouTube. Uh, the rebroadcast that will be there. Until next time, remember God has plans for your life. And none of those plans include the future.